I won't deny my appreciation for the scale and detail of Disney attractions. It is one of my favorite places to visit, just to experience the depth of each of the stories that are being told. One of the details that I enjoy is the lighting effects, especially in the stretching room of Disneyland's Haunted Mansion and the indoor queue of Indiana Jones' Temple of the Forbidden Eye. To me, these little details add pluses to the overall experience. I'm going to attempt to mimic this lighting effect with an Arduino Uno and a few external parts. Should be fun. from going rogue, I need to set out the goals of the build. Overall light level needs to be adjustable. The overall light level will also have a surge effect where the light intensity increases and decreases on a continual basis. There will be an adjustment for more or less of this effect. Finally, an added flicker effect where intensity and frequency of the effect are adjustable. Just as a reminder, don't forget to subscribe. Click like if you do, and the notification bell for new videos. And if you have comments, please leave them below. The initial test circuit has a few parts around the Arduino Uno. We start with the Arduino and connect the four controls for the effects adjustments. All the 100 kilo ohm potentiometers are connected to 5 volts and ground from the Arduino. The POTS wipers are connected to the analog inputs of the Arduino. This configuration is basically an adjustable voltage divider monitored by the Arduino. The base light pod is connected to the analog input 0. The base light surge depth pod is connected to analog input 1. The flicker depth pod to analog input 2. And the flicker delay pod to analog input 3. I'll be using digital pin 3 as the output as it can produce a pulse wave modulation signal or PWM. This signal will be what controls the intensity of the light. The light in this test will be just a single LED. The digital pin 3 is connected to a 470 ohm resistor and then to the anode of the LED. This limits the current to 11 milliamps as protection for the LED. The cathode side of the LED goes to the circuit ground. We'll take the concept from the screen and build it on a breadboard. Now that that's done, let's look at the Arduino script. I put a lot of remarks in the script for my own benefit just to keep track of what I'm doing. First off, we'll set the constants and variable integers that will be used. Next is the script set up to initialize the serial communication to monitor the PWM during testing, to set pin 3 as an output, and the initial reading of analog inputs 0 and 1. The main section of the script is the looped section. The first check is to determine if the base light level has been adjusted, and if it has, the read of analog input 0 occurs. The second check is to determine if the surge light level has been adjusted. This one is a little different as I found that the read value of this control isn't consistently stable when a change is not being made. There is an if or statement to determine if the read of analog input 1 has changed more than a value of plus minus 5. The next section controls the base light level and the amount of the surge level via an if statement counter. The base light sensor variable value that we determined earlier is incremented by the base light surge count and then checked by an if statement to determine if the value is within 0 and 255. If not, the sign of the base light surge count will be reversed. We add the base light value and the surge value and then check if the sum is greater than 255 and cap it there. As well, we also check that the value is not less than 0. Now we can trigger the LED with the PWM signal by the analog write command using the assigned output pin and the light level value. A delay value is generated based on the base light surge variable value but inversely mapped. The smaller the surge, the greater the delay. The larger the surge, the smaller the delay. You've noticed that I've been using the map function to change the range of some of the variables. This was done to mainly accommodate the syntax of the PWM write function, which requires a value between 0 and 255. Next is to determine if a flicker effect is going to take place. 
the analog input pin 3 pot is read and remapped 0 to 20. A random number is generated using the remapped value as the maximum and then compared to the actual mapped value. If the two values are equal, the flicker subroutine will run. If not, the main loop starts again. The flicker subroutine reads the analog input pin 2 to determine the intensity of the effect and then randomly selects 50% of that value. There is an if statement to confirm if the additional flicker intensity value added to the overall light intensity is outside of the 0 to 255 range and then either adds or subtracts the flicker value from the overall light intensity. And the final part of the flicker effect is the duration of the flicker and is randomly selected and is hard-coded between 50 and 250 milliseconds. Now let's try it out. Before uploading the script to the Arduino, I'll turn down all four controls. I'll also connect the oscilloscope to the pin 3 output so that I can monitor the PWM signal. We'll check the script for any errors. There were lots, but I'm saving you from that learning experience. Upload the script to the Arduino. And now we can test the adjustments. Alright, so let's start with the uh, base light control. And as we turn it up, we can see that the pulse width changes. As we keep turning it out, we can turn it up to full. Yeah. You can see the LED light up. It's hard with an LED because it, it's either almost on or off. But if you get it low enough, you can see it does dim down. So let's do it there for now. It's kind of dim. And now the surge one, let's do it to 50% roughly, and then it automatically starts dropping down, and then it'll start ramping up again. There it goes. Okay, so let's turn the, the surge down, and let's play with the flicker part. So let's do, let's do full flicker, and we'll have it so it flickers quite often. And you can see that it does blink on and off randomly, different sizes or different uh, intensities. We'll turn it down a little bit so it's not as obnoxious maybe, and maybe not have it quite as often. Let's add a little bit of surge to that. Yeah, we'll just experiment and see how it looks. Yeah. That seems to work. So if we increase the surge rate pretty high and then add more flicker, we could probably see how it uh, subtracts uh, the intensity when it gets over the 255 threshold. Don't forget the the flicker is only 50% of it a full intensity. Yeah, there it goes. It starts taking it away. Yeah, so different combinations. It could work well. It also will be different with an incandescent bulb, but an Arduino can't drive that. To get a better impression of the effect, I connected a small LED camping light. That looks better, but the light doesn't create the complete effect on its own, so I'll add a little appropriate music to assist in the effort. I think this is a good start. Add your comments and let me know what you think. Since this LED doesn't have the intensity for a room, 
I will be expanding on this project by adding an AC circuit and light in the next episode.